Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. Another opportunity for us to come together and hear and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. Good to see everyone here today. <laughs> All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast and give him freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said... Peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, the ones watching in on the camera, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing uh, we say to them is repent that they might live. Right? We say repent that they might live because the Most High God say that's his goal. Right? He want people to repent. He want people to come to repentance. Think about the Most High God. He don't change his standard though. All right? When he when he say even. See, the thing about us is that we love our kids so much, right? You go to a lot of people say, oh, yeah, you know, we all got children. That's where they, they mess it up. Because us, like, we love our kids so much, we might change our standard in order to make sure that they accept it. You know what I'm saying? It's hard running around here, you know what I'm saying? He's not listening, things like that. But I see that he real sad, and I, he might be going through something. And so, you know what I'm saying? He's sick today, so I'm just not going to. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to whoop his butt. I'm just not going to do this. So we'll change our standards. Like, even though this is unacceptable behavior in any other context, but because certain things are going on, we'll change the standard to make sure our, our children are comfortable. Most High God don't do that. All right? Most High God, the standard's the same. No matter what, if you want to get in, this is how you get in. The standard don't change. He might do other things to help you get there, but he's not going to change the actual standard. All right? So at the end of the day, no matter who you are, no matter what you do, you, if you want to be saved, you got to repent. You got to turn from sin and not just a couple of them. You got to turn from all of them, thing, all of them things. All right? That's what we look up. That's what, that's what we come here to learn. That's what we, we come here to uh, try to understand what the word got to say to us. Let's go to uh, John chapter 5. This is John chapter 5. Give me verse uh, 36. Maybe. But I, have, but I have greater witness than that of John. For the works which the Father has given me to finish, the same works that I do bear witness of me that the Father has sent me. Uh huh. And the Father himself which has sent me has borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his shape. Uh huh. And ye have not his word abiding in you, for whom he has sent ye, him ye believe not. Uh huh. Search the scriptures. He says, search the scriptures. For in them ye think ye have eternal life. Because in them you think you have eternal life. But. And these are they which testify of me. He said, but the whole time the scriptures are talking about him. All right. That's what we look to try to figure out. Last week we started off. We, uh, we, we started back off in the book and in, in, in the beginning. All right. We started off in Genesis. And we kind of did a quick little summary of the beginning of Genesis and kind of just gave a layout of what we could expect. Uh, talked about, you know, the genealogies and everything. And I said this week we would kind of dig into it a little more. We went all the way up to Abraham, so that's kind of where we're going to start off today, uh, just to kind of kick off from there. So let's go to Genesis chapter uh, 12. It's Genesis chapter 12. So just to kind of set the stage a little bit, Abraham... Most High God spoke to Abraham while he was in the uh, land of, uh, when he is in the land of really, really Babylon is what, what it was. Shinar. Um, yeah, Shinar. Uh, but he, he called them out from there. He said, leave your people, you know what I'm saying, and bring only that, that which belongs to you. So the Most High God called him out of there, and he brought Lot, who was to him like a few different things. He is a, a brother to him, a nephew to him in a way. And um, also a, uh, a like a son to him, so he brought Lot along with him because it was in a way that he belonged to him. And then from there, they started to divide the land up. Right, so we're gonna we're gonna kind of pick up from uh, Genesis chapter twelve, verse ten, and we're gonna read from there and see what happened when there was a famine in the land. 
don't know why my nose is itching. Like and wondering. there was a famine in the land, and Abram went down into Egypt to sojourn there. So notice his name is Abram. He was introduced to us as Abram. Keep going. For the famine was grievous in the land. All and right. it came to pass when he was come near to enter into Egypt that he said unto Sarai, his wife, Behold now, I know that thou art a fair woman to look upon. All right, so he told his wife, Sarai, so it's Abram, who is Abraham, and Sarai, who later becomes Sarah. He told her, he said, I know that you're a fair woman to look. In other words, I know you good looking. Right? Why does that matter to Abram? Let's see. Therefore it shall come to pass when the Egyptians shall see thee, that they will say, this is his wife, and they will kill me, but they will save you alive. All right? Abram, worry, like, because you're good looking, somebody's going to want to take you as a wife. So they're going to mess around and kill me so they can have you as a wife. He's like, for that reason, tell me you my sister. Keep going. And it came to pass that when Abram was coming to Egypt, the Egyptians beheld the woman that she was very fair. Uh huh. The princes also of Pharaoh saw her and, commend, and commended her before Pharaoh. Uh huh. And the woman was. They said that she was very fair. In other words, beautiful. All right, keep going. And the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house. Your thing got to be fine if, like, you go into a country and they immediately take her to the king. They got her. <laughs> All right, so they took her, and they took her to the king. And he entreated Abram well for her sake. And he had sheep and oxen. And he did donkey. what? He, he entreated Abram well for her sake. So because of his woman, they treated him well, thinking that she was his sister. Right? They said, no, nah, man, yeah, no, nah, you cool in our book trying to get at the woman. Right? And so they took him home, and then they gave him a whole bunch of cattle. Right? So later on, we're going to read how Abraham is this rich man. How did he become rich? Because of the woman who they thought was his sister, they was giving him gifts to court his sister. Right? That was our culture. You would look at a woman. There would be a woman that's been taken care of by a man. Right? Usually a father. And then you would give gifts to the father to get the wife, right? And so that's what they were doing. They were like, okay, well, yeah, let me treat you well. You know what I'm saying? That's your sister. You take care of yourself. Okay, let me treat you well. Let me make sure you're good. You got, you got everything you need. Go ahead and take this cattle. So this is part of how Abraham became a rich man, starting right here. Keep going. And oxen, and he dunk, and he donkeys, and man, men servants, and maid servants, and she donkeys, and camels. So they gave him man servants, maid servants, camels, all types of stuff. So Abraham, he walked out of here balling. Looked like his plan is working. Let's see. And the Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarai, Abram's wife. All right? Most I got hit that land with a whole bunch of plagues after that. So let's see what happened. And Pharaoh called Abram and said, What is this that you have done unto me? Why did you not tell me that she was your wife? All right? So that's how Pharaoh, Pharaoh somehow found out. He was like, man, it's your wife. It's not your sister. Right? He's like, why didn't you tell me this? Keep going. Why sayest thou she is my sister? So I might have taken her to wife. And now, therefore, behold, your wife, take her and go your way. All right? He said, go ahead and go. And he didn't take the stuff back. Is that the end? Uh, and Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him. And they sent him away and his wife and all that he had. All right? So they sent him away, and he had he had everything, right? Everything that they gave him, he allowed them to keep it, right? So that's how that's how uh, Abraham ended up being being uh, rich, or at least the start of it, right? But you look at it as the Most High God to protect Abraham. He hit a plague on him. Had he found out it was his wife, they probably would have killed him, right? But the Most High God sent the plague onto the people. And obviously, we'll read, we'll read another passage later, and we'll figure out how, how Pharaoh probably found out, right? But Pharaoh found out, was like, man, it's your wife, not your, not your sister, it's your wife, right? We look at that, and we think, oh, okay, that's a nice story from Abraham. But let's go to Hebrews chapter 2. It's Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9. But we see Yahushua, who was made a little, a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, 
that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. For it became him for whom are things whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons unto glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. All right. So through Yahushua's surf suffering, many sons will be brought to glory. Pay attention to what he's saying. Watch this. For both he that sanctifies and they who are sanctified are all of one. He said, both he that are sanctified, I mean, who the, he that sanctifies and those that are sanctified are all of one. In other words, they all come from one man, one guy. Right? Let's see. For which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. He said that he's not ashamed to call them what? Brethren. He's not ashamed to call them brothers. Yahweh Shua is they talking about. Right? Yahweh Shua, according to this book, Yahweh Shua is our brother. Right? Just like Abraham. Abraham was like, man, you know, just, just tell him, tell him you're my sister. Right? That made, at that point, that made his wife say that he was her brother. All right, keep going. Let's see. He was not ashamed to call him brother. Saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. He said, in front of everybody, guess what you're going to be to me? I'm going to be your brother in front of everybody. I mean, when everybody around, in the midst of, I mean, when we public, he said, I just want people to know that I'm your brother in the public. Right? But then we also know that we end up being the man wife. Right? Grab, uh, grab Genesis chapter 20. This Genesis chapter 20, verse 13. Watch this. And it came to pass when God caused me to wander from my father's house that I said unto her, this is thy kindness which you have which you shall show unto me. This is Abraham. Place. This is Abraham talking to his wife. Right? He well he talking he talking to Abimelech, a man named Abimelech, and he's trying to explain himself, talking about what he said to his wife. Now watch this. And it came to pass when God caused me to wander from my father's house that I said unto her, This is thy kindness which you shall show unto me. At every place where we shall come, say of me, He is my brother. In the public, he telling her, I'm just your brother. Right? That's what Yahweh Shua said. He, he wasn't ashamed. To, in the midst of the congregation, he wasn't ashamed to say, hey, brother. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't ashamed to call us brother in the midst of the congregation. Same thing Abraham. Abraham was like, listen, in the public, you my brother. I mean, yeah, I'm your brother. Right? Tell him, tell him I'm your brother. Right? Keep going. And Abimelech took sheep and oxen and men servants. He gave what? Servants, sheep, oxen, men servants, and woman servants. And gave them unto Abraham and restored him Sarah, his wife. He ended up being rewarded again. This is a separate occasion where he went down. We'll read, we'll read more of it later. I just wanted us to grab the brother part. But you see, you see, it, it ends up being a reward for him again. Right? We think we're reading about Abraham. All right? Grab, uh, grab uh, uh, Ephesians chapter 5. It's Ephesians chapter 5, verse 17. Right? So Abraham got his wife, who he tells to call him a brother in public. You know what I'm saying? He's going to the city, Abraham, like, man, listen, if they see my wife, she fine. They're going to mess around and take my wife from her. And then they're going to kill me. That's what he is worried about. He's like, they're going to kill me and take my wife. Right? He wasn't willing to die for that. He just said, listen, they're going to mess around and kill me and take my wife. He's like, nah, I'll tell you what. In public, just tell them, uh, I'm your brother. This is Ephesians chapter 5, verse 17. Watch what the book say. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Uh huh. And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. He said, Be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Watch what he said. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father, in the name of our Lord, Yahushua, the Messiah, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. He says, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of Yah. Watch this. 
Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands. What the wives supposed to do? Submit yourselves unto your own husbands. And then what else? As unto the Lord. As unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife. And the husband is the head of the wife. Even as the Messiah is the head of the congregation. Even as the Messiah is the head of the congregation. In that same way, the husband is the head of the wife. What are you going to say next? And he is the savior of the body. And he's the savior of the body. Keep going. Therefore, as the congregation is subject unto the Messiah, mm -hmm. so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Mm -hmm. Husbands, love your wives, even as Yahushua also loved the congregation. Uh huh. And gave himself for it. And did what? Gave himself for it. He said, husband, love your wives, and what? Also love, uh, even as the Messiah also loved the congregation and gave himself for it. That, that means Yahushua look at the congregation as a wife. We just read back there, we said, he said, I, I am not, I mean, he was not ashamed to call his, his people. Right, let's just grab it again. So, hold what we got right there. Go back to Hebrews chapter 2. I think, what, verse? Probably 12. 12, what I want. It's Hebrews chapter 2, verse 12. And then we're going to jump right back over into Ephesians chapter 5, verse what? 25? 25. It's Hebrew chapter 2, verse 12. And watch very closely what he said. I might want verse uh, 11. Saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the congregation will I sing praise unto thee. That's 12 or 11? Uh, 12. Give me 11. For both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are all of one. He said they all of one. Watch what he say next, though. With, for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. He said he's not ashamed to call them brethren. Now watch the setting in which they being called brethren. Watch this. Saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the congregation. In the midst of the what? Congregation. So in the midst of the congregation, he going to call brethren. Now let's go back to Ephesians. In the midst of the congregation, guess what he going to call them? Brethren, that's in public, right? In the public, uh, you my brother, right? I'm, bro I'm your brother in the public. Then we go back to Ephesians chapter uh, five, five, verse 25. Watch what he say here. Husband, love your wives even as the Messiah also loved the congregation and gave himself for it. Congregation ended up being a wife. Jump on down to, you might have to help me find this, uh, going to be towards the end of that chapter. Talk about Adam and Eve to become one flesh. This is a mystery. Uh, 31. This is verse 31. This is we Ephesians 5, 31. We will start at, at 30. I don't want too much of it. Oh, wait, wait. Uh, 30. 30? Okay, this is Ephesians chapter 5, verse 30. Nope, 29. This is Ephesians chapter 5, verse 29. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourishes it and cherishes it, even as the Lord, the congregation. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. Mm -hmm. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Messiah in the, in the congregation. So you see here, the Messiah in the congregation represent Adam and Eve, husband and wife. Right? So the congregation is actually his wife. But at the same time, the congregation, he's the brother to the congregation. Right? And we see that exact same thing with Abraham. Abraham's like, in the public? Just say I'm your brother. Just tell, I mean, if anybody at, just say I'm your brother. Right? But at the same time, that's his wife. What else we got there? Is that the last uh, verse? Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself. And the wife see that she reverence her husband. Right? That's why, that's why people, you, you look at these things, and when Yahushua was coming on, you'll see that he represented a lot of these people that we look at in the book. The whole book itself. We think we're just reading about Abraham. Right? But the things that he did, it represents and testifies. That's what the book means when it says it testifies of me. You're looking at it, and you just think, oh, yeah, Abraham, I don't know why he told him. You know, he's just sister, you know what I'm saying? That's his wife, this, that, another. Until it makes sense, until you see, oh, that, he had to do that. He didn't have a choice. Because it had to testify of Yahushua. 
right? That's when Yahweh Shua, that's why when Yahweh Shua was talking about these, grab uh, John 8. That's when Yahweh Shua was telling them, trying to tell them about their fathers and all that stuff. He was like, man, our father Abraham. Yahweh Shua had to lay it on them real quick. It's John chapter 8. Marriage supper in Revelation. John chapter 8, verse 48. Yeah, absolutely. You had a marriage supper in Revelation where the uh we are we are, we already read a little bit of that. Where uh Jerusalem come down. The bride that was made the bride. herself ready. All right, we talked about the red marriage supper a couple weeks ago. Eight verse what? It's eight verse forty eight. John chapter 8, verse 48. Watch this. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that you are a Samaritan and has a devil? <laughs> right? They said, well, you're a Samaritan. You're a Gentile and you got a devil. Let's see. Yahshua answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father and ye do dishonor me. Uh-huh. And I seek not my own glory. There is one that seeks and judges. Mm -hmm. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. Then said the Jews unto him, now we know that you have a devil. He Abraham. Said, look, he said, if you do what I say, you will never die. They looked at him and like, now we know you are the devil. You know what I'm saying? They asked him like, so we not telling the truth when we say that you are a Samaritan and you are the devil? I mean, because literally, he is from the north, right? Just north of where the Samaritans are. So you start coming down south where, you know what I'm saying, where Judah is. They're like, well, you come from where the Samaritans come from. I mean, that's a natural route. They're like, so we not telling the truth when we say that? Then he come back and be like, listen, all I'm trying to say is, if y'all listen to what I say, y'all never die. So they looking at him like, what in the world? Now we know you got a devil. Watch what they say next. Abraham is dead and the prophets. He said, Abraham and the prophets, they all dead. And you saying, if a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. But y'all, she was talking about, if we do what y'all should say, we won't die? They asking the question, they're like, Abraham dead, the prophets are dead. However, you out of your mouth are telling me that if we do what you say, we won't die. But Abraham and the prophets are dead. Remember, they look at this man like just any old man. Right? They're like, that don't make no sense. The greatest men we know, dead? And you trying to tell me if we do what you say, you, old Samaritan, you know what I'm saying, all of a sudden we going to live forever. Okay. Watch what they say next one. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead, and the prophets are dead? Whom makest thou thyself? He said, whom makest thou thyself? A.K.A. Who do you think you is? Who do you think you is? Right? They look like, who do you think you are? That doesn't make sense. Are you trying to say that you greater than Abraham and the prophets? Who do you think you are? Watch this. Watch what y'all should say back to him. Yahshua answered, if I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my father that honors me, of whom ye say that he is your God. Yet ye have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like you. Mm -hmm. But I know him and keep his saying. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. He said, your father Abraham did what? Rejoiced to see my day. And what do you saw think? saw it and was glad. What do you think he meant by that? So, y'all talking about Abraham, man. What you talking about? Y'all know what y'all talking about. Abraham was testifying to me. He rejoiced to see my day. And what happened? Was he, was he upset about it? He was glad. Let's see the next verse. Then said the Jews unto him, You are not yet 50 years old, and you have seen Abraham. They looking like Abraham was a long, long time. At this point, Abraham was thousands of years ago. They looking at him. Well, you ain't even 50 yet. I mean, you just edging out 30. You running your darn mouth about Abraham. You try to say Abraham saw you? That don't make no darn sense. Why would he say, why, why would he say back to him? Verily, verily, I say unto you before. In Abraham, other words, for real, for real, right? Verily, verily. He said, in other words, for real, for real, I say unto you. Before Abraham was, be, I say unto you before Abraham was, I am. He said, before Abraham was, I was already there. After he said that, they picked up stone. They were ready to get that butt. Because they, they looking like, who is this man talking this crazy stuff? You trying to say you came before Abraham? Absolutely. Whole time Abraham, every time we look at Abraham, he testifying to Yahweh Shua. How you got a man in public, he tell his wife, nah, I'm your brother. Just, I mean, just tell him I'm your brother. But really, it's his wife. 
tell him, make sure you tell him I'm your brother. Same thing y'all should do. In the congregate, in the midst of the congregation, brethren. Right? At the same time, the congregation is his wife. That's book. What are we gonna do with that? We gotta take it. We gotta look at it. It's uh this John, I mean, I'm sorry, it's uh, uh Genesis chapter 20. Let's go back. Right? Because what it what it all came down to is Abraham didn't want to be killed over his wife. That's the difference, right? Yahushua, he died for his wife. Right? That's what he just told us. He said the congregation which he gave himself for. So he gave himself for his wife. Right? That's the difference. Abraham was like, no, no, I'm not, I'm not about to do that. You know what I'm saying? Mm, nah. No, not going to happen. Go ahead and tell him I'm your brother. All right? Yahushua did it, but he still, I'm your brother, and I'm still going to take that L. All right? He still died for it. That's the difference. All right, this is Genesis chapter 20, grab, uh, grab verse uh, 11. And Abraham said, because I thought surely the fear of God is not in this place. All right, so this is, he did the exact same thing that we read about in chapter 12. He told her, tell him, I'm your brother, you know what I'm saying? Then, uh, then I, all of a sudden, a plague hit the people, you know what I'm saying? And now he has to explain himself. So now he's explaining himself to Abimelech. Not Pharaoh this time. He's explaining himself to Abimelech, and he's telling him, he's like, listen, the only reason I did this is because he thought what? Because I thought surely the fear of God is not in this place, and they will slay me for my wife's sake. He is like, they going to mess around and kill me over my wife. Y'all sure remember, y'all sure down for it. He is like, man, I'm your brother, and I know you're my wife, but uh, I'm going to die for you anyway. Y'all sure he gave himself for it. Abraham was like, nah, I thought for sure. Yeah, y'all were gonna kill me. So in order to avoid it, what happened? And yet, uh, so and they will slay me for my wife's sake. And yet, indeed, she is my sister. She is the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother. Uh oh. And she became my wife. We have a new plot twist. Abraham told us, "Well, no, she actually is my sister." I ain't telling a lie now. She really is my sister. We think about that. That's nasty. They be trying to make it seem like. He lied to like make it seem like Abraham was like a sinner too. Yeah, nah, he, nah, he ain't tell no lie now. A lot of people think he did. That's why I started off trying to make it seem like, you know what I'm saying? But no, a lot of people think he lied. He ain't tell no lie now. He said, she is my sister. She the daughter of my father. She not the daughter of my mother. Right? We look at that real nasty. Why in the world would the most high God let that happen? I'll tell you why he had to let that happen. It has to testify y'all sure. We just read. He said all of them, when we were reading the Hebrews, he said all of them came from how many? What? In Hebrews, it, it told us all came from how many? One person. All came from one. One guy. Right? That's the only way it worked. Because we're brothers and sisters. Right? That's the only way it works. So we all have to have the same what? Same father. Maybe not the same mother, but we all got the same father. Just what Abraham said. Well, let's see. Let's see if they got the same. Him and Sarah, let's see if they got the same mother or the same father. And yet, indeed, she is my sister. She is the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother. And they she got, became my wife. They got the same father and ended up being his wife. Right? You lay it out and you look at it, everything has to line up according to the book. Right? Keep going. And it came to pass when God caused me to wander from my father's house that I said unto her, This is your kindness which you shall show unto me. At every place where we shall come, say of me, he is my brother. And Abimelech took sheep and oxen and manservants and woman servants and gave them unto Abraham and restored him Sarah, his wife. All right. And Abimelech said, Behold, my land is before you. Dwell where it pleases you. So you see, you notice again, after doing that, Abraham ends up being blessed and he ends up being, becoming more rich because of it. Right. Both high God gave him all this stuff. He didn't tell no lies. All right. He used a strategy. Right? He tried to make sure that he didn't end up dying because of his wife. We see Yahushua didn't take that strategy. Yahushua had to say, you my brother, just because he had to fulfill the prophecy. Right? All things had to be fulfilled by Yahushua, so it had to line up, and he had to say it. At the same time, he ended up dying for it. Right? Jump on up to verse 1. We all know we're skipping around in a little bit, but I just want you all to get the picture. This uh, Genesis chapter 20, verse 1.
Genesis 20, verse 1. And Abraham journeyed from there, from thence toward the south country, and dwelled between Kadesh and Shur, and sojourned in Gerar. And Abraham said to, of Sarah, his wife, she is my sister. And Abimelech, king of Gerar, sent and took Sarah. All right. So this is the beginning of it. He had told her, look, that's my sister. Right? That's my sister. That's my wife. Right? He didn't say it's not my wife, but that's what he, he, want, he didn't want them to think that's not my wife. All right? He didn't want them to think that was his wife, rather. Right, keep going. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said unto him, Behold. So Abimelech, who ran the place, who saw this woman, and he wants the woman, most High God came to him in a dream. So that's probably what happened with Pharaoh. You remember, Pharaoh found out somehow. He's like, This ain't your wife. This ain't your sister. It's your wife. But the book never told us how Pharaoh found out. But we he tells us a little bit more in this case. God came to Abimelech in a dream. He said, What? In a dream by night, and said to him, Behold, you are but a dead man. He said, you, you, I mean, you everything but dead. He said, You but a dead man. Most high God spoke to excuse me, most high God spoke to him in a dream, saying, You but a dead man. Let's we'll see what happened. For the woman which you have taken, for she is a man's wife. Uh oh. But Abimelech had not come near her, and he said, Lord, will thou slay also a righteous nation? He said, I ain't touched that woman yet. What you gonna do? I, you gonna slay even a righteous nation? We ain't did nothing wrong. Watch what God say. Said he not unto thee, she is my sister, and she, even she herself, said he is my brother. In the integrity of my heart and innocency of my hands, I have done this. Mm -hmm. And God said unto him in a dream, Yeah, I know that you did this in the integrity of your heart, for I also withheld thee from singing, sinning against me. Therefore suffered I thee not to touch her. All right, notice how the, how the Most High God worked. All right, Most High God, he wanted Abraham to go on down in a famine and go ahead and make sure it was a famine. That's why he went down, right, and make sure that his family was taken care of. They go down there. He ended up, you know, hey, look, look, you my sister, I'm your brother, right? They planned it out. That worked. Abimelech fell for the trap. He looking like, yeah, I'm about to give me a nice one here, right? And before he do it, not after he do it, the Most High God let warn him. And the way he warned him, he didn't say, he didn't start up the conversation with, hey, that's somebody's wife that you're about to mess with. He started off the conversation with, you are but a dead man. Imagine that. That's, that's the most high God's first interaction with you is telling you that you, you about good or dead. Right? We look, it kind of changes our perception of how God works. So I'm about to kill you. It, can't, it changes it. You look at all this positivity stuff and, oh, God, this, that. You see that that's different from all that that we hear. The first interaction that we hear about for this man is you are, you. I mean, you about good as dead. All because you did. And he telling me, look, listen, I haven't done nothing. I haven't come near this woman. He told me that it was his sister. She told me it was her brother. I didn't even do nothing wrong. I didn't know nothing. In the innocency and the integrity of my own heart have I done this. I guess the most I got to say back, I know. I know you wasn't. I know you didn't mean nothing bad by it. That's why I came to you and told you you but a dead man to stop you from doing it. That's the approach that the Most High God chose. We have to be able to look at these situations and say, "Hmm, what kind of God are we dealing with? Are we dealing with the God that's gonna come? No, maybe you shouldn't do that. He ain't gonna tell you nothing. He ain't gonna tell you you dead. What's that gonna do? That's gonna shock you. I mean, like, what? Hold on, what I do? Why am I dead? Hold on, right?" That's how he gets your attention. That's how he chooses to do it. We may look at him and be like, there's much better ways of doing it now, Lord. You think he's taking our advice? Paul asked, he's like, what counsel have we? Right? At what point do we counsel God? This is how he chose to do it. They ain't better make sense to you. They ain't better make sense to you. Right? He said, no, nah, in the integrity and the innocence of my heart, I, I did this thing. Most like God said, yeah, I know. That's why I told you to do it. That's why I came here, and, and, and that's why I came here and tried to stop you. I had to tell you, you but a dead man. That's the Most High God's approach, right? Even when we look when when the Most High God tells us, go to uh, Ezekiel chapter eighteen. Look at when He tells us to repent. Let's see what language He using when He tells us to repent. Let's see if it's different. This is Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter uh, eighteen, verse. Um, matter of fact, give me a, Ezekiel chapter three, verse eighteen.
Ezekiel chapter 3, I think, verse 18. When I say unto the wicked, you shall surely die. And you give him not warning, nor speak to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at your hand. So pay attention to what we just read. It's easy to just read this stuff and it just gloss over you. You don't really catch it. Notice what he just said. He says, when I say to the wicked, you shall surely do what? Die. You, you're most definitely going to die. Not, not maybe you'll die and not. If you don't stop, you're going to die. He says, you are going to die. When I say to the wicked, your butt is definitely going to die. What's the charge if we don't say it? Go ahead. Yet if you, yet it, wait. And you give him not warning, nor speak to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at your hand. To save his life. His strategy is tell him that you will die in the effort to save his life. For us, that seems backwards. Why would you tell somebody they're going to die so that they live? Right? It seems backward to us. To the most high God, he's saying, oh, I know how y'all work. I know how to get y'all attention. He let them know, you're going to die. Most, I mean, you're... Sh not, not maybe, you're definitely going to die, right? And if you don't tell them just like I told you to tell them, your blood, that blood on your hand, because I'm trying to save this life. Keep going. Watch this. Yet if you warn the wicked and he turn not from his wickedness nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but you have delivered your soul. Uh-huh. Again, when a righteous man does turn from his righteousness, and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die. Because you have not given him warning, he shall die in his sin. And his righteousness, which he has done, shall not be remembered. But his blood will I require at your hand. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, if you warn the righteous man that the righteous sin not, and he does not sin, he shall surely live, because he is warned. Also, you have delivered your soul. Mm -hmm. And the hand of the Lord was there upon me, and he said unto me, Arise, go forth to the plain, and I went there to talk with thee. Mm -hmm. I went there, talk with thee. Then I arose and went forth into the plain, and behold, the glory of the Lord stood there as the glory which I saw by the river of, river of Kiber, and I fell on my face. Then the Spirit entered into me and set me upon my feet and spake with me and said unto me, Go, shut thyself within your house. Mm -hmm. But thou, O son of man, behold, they shall put bands upon thee and shall bind thee with them, and you shall not go out among them. Mm -hmm. And I will make your tongue cleave to the roof of your mouth that you shall be dumb and shall not be to them a, a reprover. And all this happened too. For they are a rebellious house. Mm -hmm. but so notice what he just said. He just said, if you say these things to these people, you know what I'm saying, then the blood is on them. If you don't say these things, it's on you. Then he just told them, I'm going to stop your tongue up because this is a wicked house. I ain't going to let you say nothing to them. Right? Because that's putting them in a the position where it's not going to say they like. They're not going to be able to hear what they need. They're not going to be able to tell you going to die. Be, be able to be told that, that, that they're going to die. All right, keep going. But when I speak with thee, I will open up thy mouth, and thou shalt say unto them, Thus says the Lord God, mm -hmm. He that hears, let him hear, and he that forbears, let him forbear, for they are a rebellious house. Uh-huh. That's well, it. That's it. Give me yeah. verse 23 again. Watch this. Then I arose and went forth to the plain, and behold, the glory of the Lord stood there as the glory which I saw by the river of Kiber, and I fell on my face. Give me, uh, maybe I want 18. Give me uh, Ezekiel chapter 18. Right. Give me Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 18. I always get these names mixed up. 3 and 18 is a lot. This is Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 18. I want verse 3, actually, but give me 18. Let me see what it says. 
As for his father, because he cruelly oppressed, spoiled his brother by violence, and did which is not good among his people, lo, even he shall die in his iniquity. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should there die, says give the me, Lord? Give me verse 20, 22. All his transgressions that he committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him, and his righteousness that he has done, he shall live. Uh-huh. Watch what he say next. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, says the Lord God, and He's not asked that the he question. should He said, return. do I have any pleasure that the wicked should die and not turn and what? That the wicked should die, says the Lord God, and not that he should return from his way and live. But his whole goal is that the wicked turn from his sin. Just like we were talking about in the beginning. He doesn't change his standard. Right? His standard's not changing. His goal is that everybody turns away from sin. It's just the fact that he know not everybody going to do it. He keeps the standard the same. He going to tell you you're going to die. And the purpose that he's telling you that is that you will listen and that you will turn from your ways. Right? But it's important that we understand how we work. Otherwise... These things that happen, somebody would come up and say something to us, and we'd be feeling like, oh, that ain't no man of God. Even though he just told a man of God to say, walk up to these people and tell them that you're going to die. Yeah, you just being negative. You don't say nothing that to, like that to a person. You don't condemn no person to hell like that. This, that, and other like that. And the books in there tell them, you already condemned. I'm just telling you about the condemnation that God has already set you up for. When I tell you that God has condemned you to hell in your sin, right? That's supposed to encourage you to be like, I need to be out of sin. It's supposed to save our life. But we've missed that. We've been told all these other things. We've been presented God in a different way. So now when we hear the true God, it sounds like the devil to us. It's like the devil out here working. Hey, nothing but the devil, right? And the true God is the one that's actually speaking. Right? We've been confused and been hoodwinked and all this stuff has been turned around for us. That's why people don't get it. That's why people sitting around, oh, ain't no God. Peter told us about it. That's where it comes from because everything is turned around. When everything turned around, ain't no God. Because you're looking in the wrong direction. Second Peter for me. Second Peter chapter 3. Let me show you all what Peter was talking about. It's Second Peter chapter 3. Second Peter, the Second Peter, chapter three, verse five. For this, they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God. The heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. Right? He's telling. He's talking about these people don't know. They've been looking in the wrong direction so long. These people don't even know that he destroyed the whole world before. He said the whole world perished, and what else? But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. He said, if y'all knew what God y'all were dealing with, y'all would know he already destroyed the whole world once. And he's reserving to destroy the whole world again. If y'all knew what y'all were dealing with, y'all would change y'all tune. That's what Peter trying to let us know. But people are looking. He, he, he's describing people that's looking like, hey, since matter of fact, give me verse. Uh, give me verse two. Let's get some more context. That ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets uh -huh. and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts. Right? He said they're going to be scoffers. That's people that are sitting there like, oh, yeah, right. Yeah, right. These people that they don't believe, like, oh, yeah, right. We yeah, okay, well, watch what they're going to say. And saying, where's the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Where God at? Now I've been talking all this time. Jesus coming back. Jesus coming back. Where yet? I got great, great grandfathers that, that died and went to sleep. They've been saying it too. My grandmother said Jesus coming back. My great grandmother said Jesus coming back. My great great grandmother's been saying Jesus coming back. All them dead. So tell me. You got a dude, his name is, uh, they call him Brother Polite, right? Brother Polite, he think he real smart. That's the argument he had. He's like, man, I sit here and watch my grandmother sit in church, praying to a God, giving all her money, it's that another, praying that Jesus come back, 
and she dead. I said, I am never going to let my people fall for this stuff no more. So now he out there, he campaigning against the Bible and let people know. Because he like, my grandma died. She used to say Jesus come back. Jesus ain't show up. Jesus ain't did nothing for her. Right? We look at these things and it's like it makes sense. He said, it's going to come days, scoffers. Watch what Peter tell us to pay attention to, though. Because out of ignorance, what's going to happen? And saying, where is the promise of his coming? For mm -hmm. since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Mm -hmm. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. He said the world being overflowed with water perished. What is he talking about? The flood. It's Genesis chapter 6. We're going to take a quick detour. We're going to get back to what Peter, because I ain't going to go there for that. But we're going to take, take a quick detour, and we're going to get back to Peter's point, which will tie us right back into Abraham. But real quick, we got to talk about Noah. We kind of skipped over Noah a little bit. It's Genesis chapter 6. Chapter 6, verse 17. And behold, I, even I do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh. To destroy all what? All flesh. He said, this is most High God talking. He says, I, even I, do bring a flood to destroy all flesh on the earth. Keep going. Wherein is the breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. Mm -hmm. But with thee will I establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark. He talking to Noah. He said, with Noah, I'm going to establish my covenant. That sound familiar? Who else got a covenant established with them? Yo, sure. Whole book got to testify of them. All flesh going to be killed, and then only one person going to have a, a covenant established with them. And who else? Keep going. And thou and thy sons and thy wife and thy sons' wives with thee, and everything living, Every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort, shall thou bring into the ark to keep them alive with thee, that they shall be made male, that they shall be male and female. He said, everything that thou shalt bring into the what? Into the ark. And what's going to happen to them after that? To keep them alive, they, they shall be live. male and female. Keep them alive. They're going to keep them alive and they're going to live. Right? Anything that's with Noah, so a covenant made with going to be made with Noah. It's not made yet, but a covenant going to be made. So anybody who's in Noah's ark, right, you end up being alive, right? Grab uh, Genesis 7 for me. Go to the next chapter, verse 17. I don't know what that's talking about. And the flood was 40 days upon the earth, and the waters increased and bare up the ark, and it was lift up above the earth. All right, the ark was lifted up above the ark. I mean, I remember Yahushua saying something like, there's going to come a day where the Son of Man is going to be lifted up and all men are going to be drawn to him. I don't know what this could be talking about, where the ark is lifted up above the earth. Let's see. And the waters prevailed and were increased greatly upon the earth. The ark went up, went up on the face of the waters. Mm -hmm. And the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth, and all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. He said all the high hills, or all the mountains under the earth were covered. I mean, what's higher than the mountains? Right now, you ain't got nothing higher than mountains. There's mountains that's higher than anything else right now. Right? Imagine if water covered even the high hills. I mean, that means that the whole earth is literally submerged under water. Right? The whole thing submerged under water. Grab John chapter 6 for me. Matter of fact, instead of John chapter 6, grab uh, Romans 6. It's Romans chapter 6, verse 1. It's Romans chapter 6, verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? We got to be dead to sin. That's why he said, you are but a 
dead man. We got to repent. He said we got to turn from sin. All of it too. He said we dead to that. Right? Keep going. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Yahushua the Messiah. As were what? Baptized into Yahushua. What did baptized mean? To be submerged. To be submerged. What do you think happened to the earth? It was submerged. Whole earth was baptized. Why? Well, I mean, let's see why we didn't baptize. He said, "Don't you know we have baptized what? Into Yahushua. We're baptized into his death. We were baptized into his what? Death. That what? What's gonna happen next? Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death." That like as the Messiah was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Mm -hmm. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Mm. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Mm -hmm. For he that is dead is free from sin. Now if we be dead with the Messiah, we believe that we shall also live with him. Mm -hmm. knowing that the Messiah being raised from the dead died no more. Death has no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but he in that he lives, he lives unto God. So when we get submerged, it represents the killing of our flesh. Just like when Yah, when he was speaking to Noah, he said, I'm going to send a flood, and I'm going to kill all flesh. And the only ones that's going to live is the ones that's inside of your ark, because I'm going to make a covenant. Y'all thought that was talking about Noah. All right? We always looked at we like it's talking about Noah. It's talking about Yahweh Shua. Right? Into his baptism. And now we got to abide. Grab uh, John 15. We got to abide in him. If we in him, then we could be made alive. This is John chapter 15. Go ahead and start me off at verse 1. Try to shoot through this real quick. Then we get back to Abraham. It's all going to make sense. It's all tied together. It's all talking about the same man. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Uh -huh. Abide in me and I in you. He said, abide in me and I in you. Keep going. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine, no more can you except you abide in me. He said, the only way you're going to bear fruit is if you abide in me. The only way you live is if you abide in me. You have to stay in me. Just like, just like we have to stay in the ark. Right? If Noah and his son didn't go in the ark with their wives, what do you think going to happen? They're going to die. If the animals didn't come and they wasn't inside of the ark, then they died, because all flesh had to die. Keep going. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Mm -hmm. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so you shall be my disciples. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go to uh, 2 Peter chapter 3. All right, the whole baptism of the earth, Represents our baptism in Yahushua. All that testifies of Yahushua. He said, I will make a covenant with you. That testifies of Yahushua. The covenant was made with Yahushua. Right? Yahushua is Noah. Yahushua is Abraham. Jonah too, we'll get to it. Take your pick. Who you want? It's Second Peter chapter uh three. I think we left off verse what, seven? Six. Six. It's second Peter chapter three, verse six. Whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. Mm -hmm. For the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, mm -hmm. and a thousand years is one day. Mm -hmm. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness. He said he's not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness. He's trying to let us know. He's trying to remind us that, listen, all this stuff is going down. All these things are happening, right? You see Yahushua, you see Yahushua coming in, and you see all these things falling down. You see all this stuff happening. You see him 
that 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 wipe the whole world clean with water and then come back and he says I'm reserving the rest of it to fire. Right? All this is about to happen. Right? He's trying to let you know, listen, all y'all who tripping like him, eh, where's y'all with sure? Y'all say he was coming. Y'all talk about Jesus coming back. I ain't seen him. He's like, all y'all running y'all darn mouth. The man is not slack concerning this promise. Let's hear the reason why it's taking a while. As some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He said he doesn't want anybody to perish, but that all should come to repentance, which is the same thing that was said in Ezekiel just now. He said in Ezekiel, he's like, do I have any pleasure that the wicked die? I want them to return. My whole goal is to have them return. Right? When he was talking to Abimelech, do you think he went to Abimelech? He went to Abimelech and said, you are but a dead man. Abimelech told me I did this in the innocency of my heart. Most I got to say, I know. I know you did it. That's why I told you. I, I, that's why I came here, so that you wouldn't sin against me. You wouldn't mess around and do something where I got to kill you. I have no pleasure in that the wicked die. The whole reason I'm having this interaction with you is that you won't sin. But so many times we've been confused to take these things the wrong way. So now what would be for our good ends up being for our bad, for our hurt. Right? We try, he's trying to let you know, y'all get impatient with the man, but he's not slack concerning the promise now. Don't think, don't think that he's slack concerning the promise. The man, the whole thing, our whole setup, this whole book, everything that we look at, it is based on trying to save wicked men, wicked women. Right? It's based on trying to get us back to the most high God in the ever since Adam. We just talked about Adam a little bit last week. He just trying to get us back to a place where we could be right with the most high God. His 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 son came and gave himself for the congregation. Right? For that purpose. Grab grab Matthew. Alright, not Matthew. Grab uh Mark actually. That one's a little shorter. That way, you know what I'm saying? Keep the time short. It's Mark chapter 15. Mark chapter 15, verse 31. Likewise, also the chief priests mocking said among themselves. This is when he on, he on the cross. He being crucified. He said the chief, chief priest said what? Among themselves with the scribes, he saved others. Himself he cannot save. They talking about Yahushua hanging on the cross. Yahushua taking all the, talking all the big, oh, you said you, you, before Abraham was, I mean, before Abraham was, you, you am, huh? You are. Oh, is that right? Save yourself then, big man. You live forever, don't you? Huh? You always been here, huh? Go ahead and save yourself then, boy. Right? They just talking major trash to him. Keep going. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, descend now from the cross that we may see and believe. They said, go ahead and come on down from that cross. If you do it, we'll believe in you, boy. Go ahead and bring your butt now. You do it right now, I'll start worshiping you right now. They just mocking him, right? Keep going. And they that were crucified with him reviled him. Uh-huh. And when the sixth hour was come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. It was dark. Right? It was darkness over the entire land until the ninth hour of the book said. You think, you think the Most High God is making all this happen just because, I don't know, he wants some wicked people to die? It doesn't make sense. When we preach this stuff, we're not preaching this stuff because we want people to go to hell. That doesn't make sense. We preach it because that's what the words say and we trust what the man say. Sure, it may sound rough. It may feel hard. It may be difficult for you. It's because we sinners. But the goal is not for people to go to hell. The goal is that people might turn. He have all this stuff. The man suffering, being mocked by people. Hanging up. The whole world get dark. What else happened? Let's see. And at the ninth hour, Yahushua cried with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabbatani, which is being interpreted, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Man felt forsaken by the most high God. I mean, why? Because he want people to die? That doesn't make sense. It doesn't make good sense. Right? It doesn't make good sense. He's sitting there, he's like, listen, I don't want these people to die. So he put it on this cell. Right? Keep going. And some of them that stood by when they heard it said, behold, he calls Elijah. 
And one ran and filled a sponge full of vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink, saying, Let alone, let us see where, whether Elijah will come to take him down. Mm-hmm. And Yahshua cried with a loud voice and gave up the ghost. He did what? Cry with a loud voice and gave up the ghost. And there we go. That means he died, gave up the spirit, he died. All right? Just like what it said in Ephesians, he gave himself for the congregation, for his wife. This is what Abraham wasn't down to do. Right? Like, yeah, man, I'm your brother. I'm also your husband. But I give myself for you. For the, not, not for the purpose that, hey, I want everybody, I want to look cool. For the purpose that we'll turn from sin. The same reason that he went to Abimelech and said, you are but a dead man. Not because he won't Abimelech to die. He was like, nah, man, I told you that so that you wouldn't sin against. I came at you and I said something completely negative to you, completely bad, but the intention is that after you do this, I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you. That's how you separate the real from the fake. When they criticize you, are they going to help you? Are they going to help you get to where you need to go? Right? We get to a place, somebody say something to it, we don't want to ask for help. We don't want to admit that we need help. We drink up, go into a little ball, get all offended. We don't have time for that. It's too late in the day. We have to make sure we're here. We help each other and we ask them for the help. And that we looking around and we saying, you know what? That was wrong. We need to do it better. That's what the Most High God is looking at. That's his approach. Straightforward. Direct. Let me tell you where you at right now. You, I mean, you everything but, but darn dead. You are but a dead man. And we look at Yahushua became a dead man just for the sake of saving people alive. The whole earth is flooded and people are killed for the sake of saving people alive. Right? Abraham, for the sake of keeping himself alive, said, you know what? Tell him, that's my sister. Yahushua said, that's my brother. I mean, that's my sister, but I'm still, no matter what, I'm still going to give myself for the congregation. That's what it's all about for us. And it still lines up to Abraham. It's still going to testify to him. Going back to uh, Genesis chapter. Uh, Genesis. Let me get Genesis chapter. Matter of fact, you look at it. We talk about Abraham. Who else is this lined up with? Isaac. Isaac? He did the same thing. I mean, Yahushua, I mean, he was. He was dead, right? Because we remember we talked about the two become one flesh, right? So Yahushua died. But when what happened three days and three nights later? And he rose. So I mean, really, that's not death. That's like sleep. sleep. It's like a deep sleep. I mean, it was like, I mean, he like really like slept for a long time. And then out of that sleep, we have our congregation have salvation. Mm-hmm. The congregation is what? His wife? Yep. His wife came out of his sleep, really. Right? Grab Genesis for me. Genesis chapter 2. The whole book testify of him. I showed y'all Abraham, Noah. Let's see what else. Adam, he took the rib out of Adam. <laughs> it's Genesis chapter 2, verse 20. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. Remember, these are the same cattle and the beasts that the Most High God flooded in the flood and killed them all, except for the ones that went onto the boat. Adam named every one of them. Watch this. And Adam gave names to all the cattle and the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a help meet for him. Uh huh. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep upon to fall upon Adam, he and he slept what? a deep sleep. I mean, Adam, Adam was probably dead for a little bit. And then what, ha- what happened after that? And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. You know what happened when Yahushua was hanging on the cross? They put a spear in his darn side. And then you know what came out? Water. Water. 
I mean, water came out almost like a flood. Just water came and spilled out on the earth. Whole book testifying to Yahushua. No matter how you twist it and turn it and look at it, the whole thing going to testify to Yahushua. Right? The congregation was born right out of him. Three days, three nights, he woke back up. We got a congregation. All right? We got a whole congregation. That's what it's all about. All right? Watch what else. This is Genesis chapter 15. We're going to tie it right on back to Abraham. This is Genesis chapter 15. Give me verse 1. He trying to tell him, man, before Abraham was, I am. Abraham saw my day and he was glad. He rejoiced to see my day. And he was glad. He wasn't upset about it. Abraham saw his day and he rejoiced and he was glad. When that happened, he came but 30 years old. After these things, the word of the Lord came upon Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am your shield and your exceedingly great reward. Mm -hmm. And Abram and Abram said, Lord God, what will you give me, seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house is Eliezer of Damascus? Uh huh. And Abraham and Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is my heir. Mm -hmm. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be your heir, but he shall become forth out of your own bowels shall be your heir. Right? So Abraham said, uh, I'm sorry, the Most High God told Abraham, You're going to have your own kid. He said, yeah, you got, you got, you know what I'm saying, you got Lot, and you also got Eliezer, but uh, they ain't going to be the one. Somebody's going to come right out of your own loins. He said, you're going to have your own kid. Abraham ain't had no kids up to that point. He's an old man. Watch what he said. And he brought him forth abroad and said, look now towards heaven and tell the stars if you be able to number them. And he said unto him, so shall your seed be. Mm -hmm. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. Mm -hmm. And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought you out of Ur of the Chaldees to give thee, a, to give thee this land to inherit it. Mm -hmm. And he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that it, I shall inherit it? Right. He asked him. He showed him all these things. He said, how am I going to know that I'm going to inherit it? Watch what the Most High God tell him. And he said unto him, take me a heifer of three years old and a she goat of three years old and a ram of three years old and a turtle dove and a young pigeon. Mm hmm. And he took unto him all these and divided them in the midst and laid each piece one against another. Mm -hmm. But the birds divided he not. And when the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abram drove them away. You know what's crazy about that? When the fowls came down on the carcasses. If we go to Matthew chapter 24, we'll have to get it. But if we go to Matthew chapter 24, you know what y'all sure say? Where the carcass is, God, where the carcass is, the fowls will gather. He said, wherever the carcass is, that's where the eagles are. The vultures on, on gather. He is talking about himself. And look at this. Abraham had to push the fowls away because he put all the stuff. He put the carcass and then all the all the fowls came down to it. Watch what happens next, though. And I mean, the, Abraham just he just putting together his sacrifice, and then all of a sudden, watch what happens. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abraham, and lo, a horror of great darkness fell. Of, upon of him. great what? Darkness. So what happened when Yahushua was on the cross and they was mark mocking? What ended up happening? Great darkness. I mean, the whole thing got darn dark. Then after it got dark, he went into a deep sleep. Read that again for me. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abraham and Abram, and lo, a horror of great darkness fell upon him. Ended up being a great darkness that fell upon Abraham. I mean, he in the middle of making a sacrifice. What was Joshua doing? Sacrifice. Whole book going to testify of him. No matter how you twist and turn it, whole book. We read all these things the whole time. He said, you search the scriptures. That's what we do. That's all we're doing. We're going through. We try to read the scriptures. We try to understand it. He said, you search the scriptures. He said, in them, you think you have eternal life. Whole time, it's talking about me. It's talking about y'all. Sure, the whole time we look at it, we think we're reading about Abraham and Noah and Adam. Whole time, we actually just reading about y'all. Sure. When you know him, that's what it's about. How can we learn about Yahushua? How do we learn about the Most High God? When we know him, we can look at him and we'll see him in these things. 
that's why we look at him. We say when he say he he rejo- Abraham rejoiced to see my day and was glad in it. We don't know what he's talking about. When did Abraham rejoice to see his day? Genesis twenty one. We we'll end off right here because he's Adam, he's Noah, he's Abraham. I'm gonna show you who else he is. He said he rejoiced to see his day. We just read in Genesis 15 at the beginning. He said, no, nah, I'm going to give you a son. He's going to come out of your own loins. This is Genesis chapter 21, verse 1. And the Lord visited Sarah as he, said, as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age at the set time of which God had spoken to him. Most high God kept his promise. He said, no, nah, I'm going to give you a son. He's going to come from my own loins. So Sarah ended up getting pregnant. Watch this. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare to him, Isaac. He called him Isaac, right? That was his name, Isaac. And what happened? And Abraham, and Abraham circumcised his son Isaac, being eight days old, as God had commanded him. Mm-hmm. And Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born unto him. Mm-hmm. And Sarah said, God has made me to laugh so that all that hear will laugh with me. And she said, who would have said unto Abraham that Sarah should have children suck? Mm-hmm. For I have borne him a son in his old age. And the child grew and was weaned. And Abraham made a great The child feast. grew and was weaned. And he had made a what? A great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. I mean, at a feast, what do you think? You happy or mm-hmm. sad? Got to be happy. I mean, you probably rejoicing to see this day. And was glad. Not only is he Abraham and Noah and and Adam, next week we're going to talk about how he's Isaac too. Whole book testified to man. Any questions? Let's pray out.